God bless you. Always a joy to come into your homes. We love you, and we know God has great things in store. We pray for you every single day. If you're ever in our area, I hope you'll stop by and be a part of one of our services. We'd love to have you. I promise you we'll make you feel right at home. But thanks so much for tuning in today, and thank you again for coming out. I want to talk to you today about staying full of hope. God has put dreams and desires in every one of our hearts. We all have goals we want to accomplish, situations we're believing to turn around. But so often, when it's taken a long time and things are not working out, it's easy to lose our enthusiasm. And that's when the negative thoughts come, saying it's never going to change. You're never going to get well. You're never going to get out of debt. That child is never going to straighten up. And if we're not careful, we'll get discouraged and we end up just settling where we are. Many times, we miss out on God's best because we gave up too soon. We didn't realize how close we were to our victory. Just another few days of believing. Another few weeks of doing the right thing. Or another few months of staying in faith. And we would see that promise come to pass. Some of you right now, you're on the verge of seeing a major victory. You are so close to seeing that situation turn around. That answer you've been praying about is just right around the corner. You can't afford to get discouraged. You can't afford to give up now. That's what the scripture says in Hebrews 10.35. Do not cast away your confidence, for it will be richly rewarded. That's saying if we will stay in faith, if we will keep believing, keep hoping, keep doing the right thing, God promises there will be a reward. One translation says, don't get discouraged. Payday is coming. When you're tempted to get down and things are not going your way, you need to keep telling yourself, this may be hard, it may be taking a long time, but I know God is a faithful God, and I'm going to keep believing, knowing that my payday is on its way. And one thing I've learned is whenever it gets difficult, and it seems like the intensity has been turned up, that's a sign you are close to your victory. When those lies are bombarding your mind, You're tempted to get discouraged. You feel like throwing in the towel. No, that's not the time to give up. That's not the time to back down. That's the time to dig your heels in. Put on a new attitude. You are close to your victory. And I know some of you have had a lot of things come against you. It seems like the more you pray, the worse it gets. You're doing the right thing, but the wrong thing's happening. Maybe you're treating somebody kind and respectful, but they're being kind of discourteous back to you. The easy thing is to say, forget it. I don't have to put up with this. This marriage is never going to work. I'll never be able to raise this child, or I don't like this job. No, instead of getting discouraged, instead of going around all sour, you need to have the attitude, I've come too far to stop now. I've been through too much to back down. I realize the reason the intensity has been turned up is because I'm about to give birth to my dreams. I talked to a couple just last week, and they told how their son had gotten on the wrong course. He was running with the wrong crowd and had some addictions he needed to overcome. And they were doing everything they could to help him. They found him a new place to live, away from his old friends. They got him involved in a support group. They were praying more than ever. But they said, Joel, it seems like the more we pray, the more we try, the more we believe, the worse he gets. They were so concerned. But I told them what I'm telling you. The reason the intensity has been turned up is because you're close to your victory. The enemy would not be fighting him so hard if he didn't already know he was about to lose his grip on him. If you will keep believing, keep hoping, keep doing the right thing, before long, you'll give it that final push and you'll see the situation turn around. You'll see that promise come to pass. It's just like a woman that's having a baby. The first month or two is not that difficult. It's no big deal. She looks and feels just the same. But then in a few months, she starts to gain the weight. She has to carry around the extra pounds. Her feet may swell up. Her back may hurt. She may have some nausea, some morning sickness. By the eighth or the ninth month, husbands, you know, you better give that woman some space. 
Don't mess with mama. Don't back talk her. Just do what she says and nobody will get hurt. It gets more and more uncomfortable. But then when her water breaks and she goes into labor, all those other challenges seem insignificant compared to the difficulty of giving birth. I remember when Victoria was in labor with our first child, our son Jonathan. She was holding onto my arm right here so tight. And when she'd have a contraction, she would squeeze my arm. And she would scream and I would scream. I wanted to mention to her that it was hurting me, but I feared for my life. (laughs) But the truth be known, when a woman is in labor, if she had a choice, she'd probably say, I don't want to do this anymore. It's too difficult. I can't stand it. But no, she doesn't have a choice. The doctor, the nurse, the husband keeps saying, push, push, push. Before long, she pushes that baby out. And in a few minutes, she forgets all about the pain because she's holding the promise. She's holding that little child. And really, it's the same principle in life. The same principle in life. The greatest difficulty is always right before the birth. Before we see a new level of God's favor, don't be surprised if things come against you to try to discourage you. People try to talk you out of your dreams, to convince you to just settle where you are. Some of you right now, you don't realize it, but you're in labor. You're about to give birth to what God's put in your heart. That's why it's such a struggle. You're in that final push. Maybe at work, you're doing the right thing, going the extra mile, but you got passed over for that promotion. It wasn't fair. What was that? A labor pain. Just push through it. Maybe you wanted to start that new business, but your partner backed out. The financing didn't come through. What was that? Another labor pain. If you'll keep pushing Keep believing, keep hoping before long, like that woman, you're going to push that promise out. And I know some of you today, you feel like you've never had such a struggle, maybe in your finances or your health or your relationships. You could say, Joel, this is the greatest attack that I've ever faced. But instead of getting down and thinking, poor old me, learn to turn it around. And say, yes, this is the greatest attack that I've ever been through. But I know that means I'm headed for the greatest victory that I've ever seen. Remember, it's always darkest right before the dawn. You're about to give birth to that promise. Not long ago, I was in Colorado. I got up early one morning to go for a hike. There was this mountain trail that was about three miles up. And at the base, there was a sign that said it should take about three hours to get to the top. And when I looked at the mountain, it was kind of intimidating. It was not only extremely steep, but the altitude, even at the base, was 8,000 feet above sea level, and it went up to nearly 11,000 feet. And just walking up the stairs, I could feel myself breathing heavier than normal. And I wasn't real sure that I could make it to the top, but I started out with just my cell phone and a bottle of water. I had a pretty good pace going. The first 15 minutes seemed fairly easy. The next 15 minutes got a little more difficult. I was breathing heavier and had to stop every so often to catch my breath. And about 45 minutes in, the trail got extremely steep, almost like I was climbing straight up. And I'm in shape. I'm a runner, but my legs were burning. My chest was pounding. And I thought to myself, if there's another two hours like this, I don't know if I'm going to make it. And I'd just come over this big ridge... And I had to stop to catch my breath. and I could feel that sweat pouring off of my body. And the whole time, all morning, I had not seen anyone else on the path. But about that time, this older gentleman came around the curve coming down the mountain. He said one little phrase to me that totally changed my perspective. He didn't know where I was headed. He didn't know what I was thinking. But as he passed me, he smiled and said in a real calm voice, You are closer than you think. When he said that, it was like new life was breathed into my lungs. I could feel strength going into my legs, energy coming into my body. I had that second wind. And from then on out, with every stride, I kept telling myself, I'm closer than I think. Even though it was difficult, even though it was hurting, I kept saying, I'm almost to the top. I know I'm going to make it. And sure enough, Just 10 minutes later, I came over these big boulders and I could see the top. 
I made it in just under an hour. But what's my message? Without his words, I might have turned around. Without his encouragement, without his insight, I might have talked myself out of it. After all, I thought I had two more hours to go, but all I really had was ten more minutes. Now, I believe God is saying the same thing to every one of you. You are closer than you think. I don't know where you're headed, what your dreams are, how many obstacles you have to overcome, but let these words sink deep down into your spirit. Receive them by faith. You are closer than you think. That means now is not the time to talk yourself out of it. Now is not the time to get discouraged. You may think like I did, that you're not even halfway there. You've got so far to go, but you don't know. It may just be up around the corner. You may think it's going to be another two years, but if you stay in faith, who knows? It may just be two more months. You may have struggled with that addiction since you were a teenager, but you don't know how close you are to breaking it. And God is wanting to breathe new life into your dreams. He's wanting to breathe new hope into your heart. And some of you are about to give up on a marriage, on a child, on a goal. But God is saying, if you'll get your second wind, if you'll put on a new attitude and press forward like you're headed down the final stretch, you'll see God begin to do amazing things. You may be tired. You may be tempted to get discouraged. But you've got to shake that off and start talking to yourself. Instead of saying things like, man, I'm never going to get there. I'm never going to break this addiction. I'm never going to get out of this problem. No, your declaration should be, I am closer than I think. I know I can raise this child. I can overcome this sickness. I can make this business work. Weeping may endure for a night, but I know joy is coming in the morning. You've got to get up each day knowing this could be the day you get the break you need. This could be the day you see your health start to turn around. This could be the day your child comes back home. You single people, this could be the day you meet the man or woman of your dreams. Zechariah 9 verse 12 says that we should be prisoners of hope. It's easy to give up. It's easy to get discouraged. But God wants us to be so full of hope, so full of expectancy, that we just can't help believing for the best. When you're a prisoner of something, it's like you're chained to it. In other words, you can't get away from it. I know people that are prisoners of fear, prisoners of worry, prisoners of doubt. You've heard them. Nothing good ever happens to me. It's never going to change, Joel. It's just been too long. No, you're chained to the wrong thing. You need to break those chains and become a prisoner of hope. That means no matter how long it's taken, no matter how impossible it looks, our attitude should be, I just can't help it. I know it's going to work out. I know I'm going to overcome. It may be taking a long time, but I know this too shall pass. It may be difficult, but I know that means I'm close to my victory. Somebody says to you, what is it with you? You think everything's going to work out? You think you're always going to succeed? Just tell them, I don't think so. I know so. I'm a prisoner of hope. I can't get away from it. I just can't make myself get negative. I just can't make myself start complaining. I've got this hope that's feeding my faith. This hope that's constantly lifting my spirits. They may say, well, I don't know why. I saw the medical report. Doesn't look good for you. Yes, but I've got another report. It says God is restoring health back into me. Well, I saw your child. I don't think he'll ever do what's right. No, I've got another report. It says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And understand, you may not see any of this in the natural. It may not look like it's going to come to pass, but that's okay. The scripture says we walk by faith and not by sight. That means we don't have to see it to believe it. It's just the opposite. If we'll believe it, then we'll start to see it. And you need to take those dreams, those promises God's put in your heart.